In this tutorial we're going to make a low poly terrain using a height map. First things first, just get rid of the default cube and add a plane. Make sure it's selected and go into edit mode. Let's zoom in a little bit. Subdivide one two three four five six exit edit mode add a material or use one that already exists same with the texture add an image and load in the height map relative paths if you want And load. That's numpad 5 just to go into perspective mode. Click on the editing tools button, add modify, displace The texture that we need is the name of the texture we just created. So that in this case is just T E X and voila. There is your displaced mesh. You can change the height by altering the strength. If we go into edit mode and activate Activate the Enable Modify during Edit Mode, so we can see what we're doing. We can subdivide the mesh again to get greater detail. Or undo, undo. And once you're happy with the level of detail, Click Apply. That makes real the modifier on the mesh. Now before this can be used within a game environment, it's best to optimize it. And that basically means to, let's go into edit mode, that basically means to remove all of these dead vertices. Each one of these is waste, it's not used so it's not needed to be in the mesh. We do that, so we toggle out, using the decimate modifier. Change the ratio to decrease the number of polygons in the mesh. You want to reduce the face count so that you're removing enough of the, the unwanted faces, but leaving the general structure of the mesh in place. Once you're happy again with the way that the mesh appears, click the apply button to make real the changes. If we go into edit mode, you'll see obviously that that makes quite a bit of a mess. Of the mesh which now needs to be cleaned up before it can be used. So using the usual collapse or merge, work around the mesh and get rid of all these unwanted and dead faces and overlaps. So whilst you're cleaning up the mesh, one of the things that you want to watch out for are these deep V's, these deep cuts that tend to happen because of the way that the mesh is extruded or is displaced from the height map. Best thing to do with these is to select them, Control shift f and rotate the faces so that you get a more natural flow of edges and surfaces.
So you can see there that that's a much smoother or less angular surface than it was before. If we compare that to the section that's next to it, we can see the difference. This just lends itself to better mesh smoothing when that's active, when that's implemented, and better texturing as well. So keep that in mind as you are working around the mesh, optimizing it and cleaning it up. getting it ready for use in game. If you take a bit of time cleaning the mesh up, what you should end up with is something that looks a bit more reasonable with regards to rock formations. Now if we compare this, which is the cleaned up version, I've switched on wireframe so that we can see the wire if we compare this to the previous version, we can see particularly around these areas here where there's a lot of ridges as a result of the way that the mesh is extruded or displaced. So you want to get rid of those so that you end up with something that's a bit more... Let's just go into... so we can get the... So that's cleaned, and that's the original. That's the original, and that's the cleaned up version. So if we go into edit mode, we can see how the mesh has been cleaned, and all those dead and unwanted surfaces and faces and vertices have been removed. So that's the clean version and this is the dirty version. Once this is done, you're just about ready now to unwrap the mesh, UV map the mesh, apply your texture, and export it out for your game engine or 3D project. Once you've got the mesh ready to go, the next thing to do would be to just apply smoothing, mesh smoothing, smooth groups. For terrain, a good way to do this, which takes advantages of the shapes present in the mesh, is to use the edge split modifier. Now if we activate set smooth now, we'll see that what we've got, let's disable the wireframe so that we can see the mesh better, what we end up with are these hard edges that are quite useful in terms of describing the shapes and forms of rocks and hard surfaces. We can get rid of that because that's not being used. None of the edges or surfaces are marked for sharp. And we can obviously alter the angle, depending on how much or how hard we want the edges to be. It's best to use a relatively lower setting. And as with all the other modifiers, once you're happy with the appearance just press the apply button to make real the changes. You need to be mindful however that using the edge split modifier now before this has been UV mapped will well let's do it. Let's split the scene so that we can see the UV map. Edit mode, select all and new to unwrap, select unwrap, and you can see what's happened to the mesh and the UV as a result. 
the edge split modifier has actually detached vertices from one another to create the hard edges. What that does is it then also splits the UV map. So what we need to do is remove, select all, remove the doubles, then remap the mesh. Fix the UV map by readjusting some of the vertices. So if we lock the movement of the vertices to the available texture space, it then means that we can adjust the UV layout. So select each of the vertices in turn and just move them to the extreme border of the image space, texture space that's available. doing this one at a time and then once done we can then pin these press P and a little red a little red indicator appears on each of the vertices now we can either select everything in there again and press the U key or we could have done that from within the UV editor by pressing the E key it does exactly the same thing now with the UV map in place we can then go back to the edge split modifier disable that and apply so what that then does is it means that we have a UV mapped terrain with the smooth groups in place that hasn't been hasn't affected the UV map. The next thing to do would be just to simply assign the image. So edit mode, select all. And our height map. This will just do as a, a rough for the texture. We'll do a proper texture next. The final step is just to simply replace the height map texture used to displace the mesh. So we can keep the texture slot and the material slot. All we need to do is change the image slot. So click the browse button select the texture that you may have already have available relative paths select the image edit mode make sure everything is selected and then select the texture from the uv image editor it's a checker for now obviously but this could be your terrain texture however you want that to be done and once you've done that it's just then a question of prepping it properly for export to your game engine or project. And there we have it. A quick way to generate a terrain using a height map.